Welcome to the Deadly Addiction channel. I am Joseph F. Ulsis, Addiction Master on social media. Today I'm going to be talking about an animated show on Netflix, Transformers War for Cybertron. So this is going to be season two. I did season one, if you want to check it out in my TV talk section. I briefly talked about leading up to this, I was really interested in the things Machinima was doing. They did three animated type, I don't know if it's a movie, but it's like cut to sections, episodes, but it led to Netflix picking up War for Cybertron. I love season one. Season two has a lot of the great elements that season one had. The one thing about season one that was really good was the method of storytelling in a short you know episodes they were able to tell a really impactful story with a short time frame over what six episodes and it was in my opinion astounding i, I really like it i love it i got into it season two is really good it has one of my favorite episodes of the whole series so far but the story is not as um it doesn't flow as good it doesn't feel edited as good there's a subplot type thing that kind of threw me off but that might be just expectations as i thought it would be centered on earth and spoiler i don't give many spoilers of plot reveals but the ending of the series basically is just a flash and a hint of Earth, but the way it progresses, the way it hits certain beasts was just not as good as season one. Do I recommend it? Yeah. Transformers is uh, really good. Season two is excellent. Season one is great. I'm more a little biased and I get creative excitement and my juices get flowing when I get into something I love like Transformers that I included into my role playing. So I role play on the Roll Die 20 site. Uh, because of the pandemic, it's a, a great uh, tool to use. And I run Marvel Adventures uh, D&D Witcher uh, campaign. So I love to add the flavor. Now I can't duplicate what they did because I didn't know it was coming out, but I pieced together a lot of the stuff that I've watched, read, uh, researched, and created my own little corner of the Transformers world where it's a, almost a new origin type thing. And I do campaigns in Transformers world. One of my characters uh, plays a Transformer. And it lets me uh, change the pace from science fiction, uh, space, you know, Transformers robots and doing more Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. stuff on Earth to interdimensional stuff so I could break it up saying that I get inspiration from watching the shows uh, I've done this before I've said it a uh, big fan of Transformers the one thing that gets me a little bit and it's a nitpick is it's not the same Optimus voice so the nitpicks would be Optimus is not the original voice now I'm not sure if he, I think he's still alive but he's old I mean he's good enough it's really good but I'm a big fan from a childhood so it, it's just a slight nitpick the story progression i think is not as good as season one and they're doing something which is a little risky i think with optimus and megatron's storylines where they interact there's this angle they're going with that could be from a certain comic book run i'd have to do a little more research but there's this angst between them, and which is good, and in some most of the cases, it's excellent. But it gets to places I just don't feel Optimus would be, or if Megatron would be. It just it just feels wrong, but not in a done in a bad way sense. Just another one of those things where I think I just wouldn't have wrote it that way, but it's uh, done well. It's just. I know so much about the characters it's influencing my bias so i don't really know if it's a nitpick but for me personally as a thing i enjoy i would like to see them change that tone a little bit there were hints of it here and there like i said 
a lot of times if the interactions are really good there's a flow between them uh i think it's great that netflix picked up the show since like i said uh machinima was doing it this is season two i thought it was called earthfall or earthrise and just like i think i said in uh, my first one i wasn't sure what they're actually calling it because i might have been ahead of the game with oh this this is what they're doing and then followed it and tentatively they were calling it something so i think this is earth rise but it's like a misnomer because as i'm watching it with my friend i kept saying you know i should never have uh gotten in my head that we were gonna see earth and as i said there's an episode in here that's probably my favorite it is great i had so much fun watching it just pure joy and it ends with a great moment that i was really excited about it's just that it's just not as good. I mean, a lot of things can't be good as the first thing. Sometimes, sometimes they're better. All right, it happens. But it's not bad in any sense. Great characterization. The struggle feels real. I love the artwork they're using. They're showing the blocky characters and because that's what they are. They're blockier characters. Maybe they do a couple things that you might seem a little outrageous, but they don't go overboard. There's another little nitpick that uh, I was talking with a friend about is... When you look at the uh, damage being done, there's a distinction between some of the Autobots and Decepticon. And I don't know if it has to do with size. Probably for the most part it does. But weapons are ineffectual. Now, I've seen this in past shows. Some past shows I just don't like. They're real kitty, But they're, in, they're probably good. I can't weigh in on them. But over the seasons, there's always that distinction between you know what you have to watch out for and that one robot who can shake things off and the one transformer who weapons are ineffectual for the most part even hand weapons and blades to energy weapons it seemed to be something that the show was using in a way to up the drama and i'm like wait but hold on that guy's you know optimus is point blank range with his rifle you know and it's you know little things like that but if you're getting into the nitpicks of that, if it's that important to you, you might notice things like that. But they continue the story properly. You've got the right tone for the feelings of the characters. There's some real uh, for animation, you know. It gives you a little bit of a a real uh, feeling for what it must have been like during Civil War for uh sentient robots what <laughs> we call them sentient or the cybertronians and there's a contingent left on cybertron of autobots that are um what well, kind of do know what they forced it was like a mishap and since someone we're gonna get stuck there a couple others said you know what i'm gonna stay here and fight well optimus fled on the arc this balances between those two stories so optimus is leading the arc and apparently the people on cybertron think he was destroyed because of how they got through the gate but uh megatron knows he's not goes after him with a ship the nemesis all that stuff is there but they did a couple of weird things and it, it threw me off because of the way i understand the timelines and i thought that was good it was like oh you thought this was gonna happen see if it's done well sometimes i don't mind it it's not even a nitpick it's uh uh, I tip my hat to that. I'm thinking this is what the progression is going to be. Size difference and damage. You know, thinking about it now, okay. I can see they're going for that um, Transformer, Combiners. Sometimes Transformers combine. And there's that level of like Titan or higher. But I can't um, find much fault in the show. Balancing the two stories was okay. It was done better in the first season because they were all on one planet. It seemed to work better with the subplot, tying everything together. Yeah, yeah, I guess maybe you had a tough you had a tough job, right? You had all going through space, getting caught in portals and finding a space gate, searching for the all spark, and then them getting chased and pirates and it, then you're cutting back to Cybertron and What's left there? Um, spoiler: There's a 
only really one Decepticon with a small group, Shockwave, who stays on Cybertron, and the group led by Alita One, I believe. And, you know, uh, there's a bunch of others there. But like I said, uh, I don't like giving too much away unless I'm doing a real deep dive and getting into the arcs of the story. But give it a shot. Transformers, War for Cybertron Season 2. I really liked it. I think there's a, it's not as sharply done. Uh, not visually, everything is great. I still love the angles they use. When they use some of the throwback stuff, uh, they really went full old school. It felt so good. You felt that childhood memory uh, come out because they use some old characters or characters you didn't expect to see. They bring them in. Uh, two in particular in the dead space or the dead zone. And you're like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. And you're getting into it. And you're like, whoa. The artwork was like they really uh, shown the difference between what a Generation 1 cartoon looked like and maybe even Beast Wars. There's some hint to that. And uh, it's just lots of fun. My nitpicks and my concern about damage are just like little things. Uh, no way that I wanted to cloud a recommendation like don't see it. I think you'll have fun. I think it's good for kids and it's got a little bit of a tone to it that can get a little adult or old you know in the mind frame but it really has to do with how far do you go are you once a heroes you saved your people from tyrants uh you know piece together the quintessons in this particular universe or storyline and they rebelled and they freed themselves but then megatron Leads to Decepticons. First of all, Decepticons, right? I think I said this in the first one. You're fucked if you just call your people Decepticons. I get it for the toy line. It was great. Autobots, you know, Transformers, robots in disguise. But when you role play, when I'm actually role playing game, a game session and stuff, and it's like, where the Decepticons? Like, where, where do you go from there? And even in the Bumblebee movie, which was actually pretty good. I liked it. Um, uh, one of the guy, the wrestler dude, uh, pretty famous uh, wrestler. He goes, um, "Why are you working with them? Don't you get it? Look, they they call themselves the Decepticons." So I've already thought of different ways of getting around that in my own personal, like running my world. But okay, you got two leaders. They clash. They've overthrown their tyrants, and one of them becomes a maniac and just wants everything under his rule, and sort of like brothers and that was the theme in the first season and that angst together really has a i don't know if i want to say weird twist because it's just my perception because i know the characters so well so you know what they have a take on a relationship between megatron and uh, optimus and it's interesting it's just not what i expected and maybe that's throwing me off i just have such a love for these characters and the law and the history bringing them into my world and role-playing the characters and characters getting to meet optimus and all the great uh autobots and decepticons uh through the cartoon series and hinting at unicron this show give it a shot let me know what you think season one loved it excellent almost perfect season two really good just narration falls a little short and some nitpicks that might not even be nitpicks for the most general audience give it a shot uh hope everybody's doing well be safe the weather's getting warmer everybody's gonna be outside more hope everybody gets their vaccines be healthy the best to you and yours